Hi everyone, Chrissy Spehar here from Ruckus Roots, coming at you live with our intersections number eight um, conversation. So these are conversations that we've been doing over the course of COVID as a way to um, continue our programming and to connect with people that um, work and create at the intersection of sustainability, um, creativity, and then racial and social justice. So it's been really amazing um, having these conversations. And this is our second to last one, although there's nothing to say we won't continue in the future, but we're just gonna be taking a little break after um, our next one, um, because we're actually gonna be starting an, another program. Oh, yay, and there's Camilla. Camilla's here, and she's actually the person that I'll be speaking with today. I'm very excited to talk with her, Camilla Sanders and she is requesting to be in the video. Okay, let's do this. Go live. Is it doing it? <laughs> oh, there it goes, yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good, I'm great. I'm doing okay. great, yeah. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Of course. I'm really proud of myself because even though this is our eighth one, this is the first time that I'm not holding my phone. <laughs> Do you have a stand? I, I, well, I actually have it up on my, um, my cat tower. So. Uh, that works too. <laughs> yeah. I need to actually invest in one of those selfie stick things i have one but it's so old that it doesn't hold the phone at the right in the right way so oh yeah yeah you you got to do that you got to do that. I, oh, I know what am i doing well you're you're a marketing expert so this is where you tell me how to do better with, with my social media um yeah it's funny because i'm on a lot of zoom calls and things like that and i'm just looking at everyone's like trying to figure out what their setup is like oh they must have this you know light or they must have a camera like it's not actually a computer right. hey adriana yay my friend joined hey adriana oh good yeah <laughs> i've been hearing that from some of my friends that do a lot more of this that there's special lights that you can get and just all kinds of stuff so you look very professional so um, yeah, I'm gonna, I need to get on that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're doing a lot of them. You might as well get like a stand and a little, I, know, some, some kind of setup. I know. It's so true. It's so true. Oh. But, well, um, so for, oops, are, did you flip or did your camera flip around? Hello? Uh oh, what happened? Hmm. I don't. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so, so what I just did is I put my phone on do not disturb because I've been on lives and then someone will call me and it'll be. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Yeah. That's so good. we're good. I, let me make sure that mine's at least on silent. Okay. Um, well, let me give everyone a little introduction to your company. Sorry. There, there we go. Um, because it sounds fantastic and it's also something that really I'm so excited to speak with you today because it's something that applies so much to Ruckus Roots and so mm -hmm. I'm so glad that we found each other yeah. um, because marketing for nonprofits especially small nonprofits I feel like is something that often falls through the cracks um, yeah. something that we don't feel like we have time or even like the right to focus on um, I want to talk with you about that. Sometimes it's this feeling of like, how do we market when our constituency and our donors are so different and how do we uh, tell our story to both of them in a way that's meaningful? Yeah. But let me first give an introduction. <laughs> so um, Mila Sanders here is in Nashville and she started um, an agency, her own marketing agency, although she has 20 years of experience in commercial marketing. Um, and that her own agency is called Greater Than Equal. And I just want to read the uh, mission statement because it's so great. So make impact easy. Our mission is to make impact easy for individuals and organizations by connecting disparate groups and amplifying the voices of underprivileged populations. We inspire individuals, empower entrepreneurs, and reinvigorate organizations to connect with communities and maximize their impact through whole person, 
vision-based marketing solutions. We amplify global issues to increase engagement with sustainable fashion, art, and diversity initiatives. So I just love that because it hits so many points that, that Ruckus Roots is about, but also just that this moment is about and so many people right. need. Um, so maybe just let's start with that. Like, how did you decide, how and why did you decide to, um, to strike out on your own and start your own agency? Yeah, so I think you kind of get to a certain point in your career and having so much experience, just, you know, just to kind of simplify it, that you realize that you have, you're, you're going to have a greater impact if you go out on your own, you know? Um, and instead of kind of, it's really hard to change your organization inside versus being outside. It's, it's, you know, you're kind of looking at the bigger picture. And so you kind of realize like, I could not just impact one organization, I could impact multiple organizations mm -hmm. if I did this on my own. And even, um, I, you know, I have a lot of people, a lot of friends that are entrepreneurs and met a lot of people that are founders of nonprofits and just meeting with them and helping them with their needs. And it's like, well, you know, this is not, I should not necessarily like put myself in a box um, to be with one organization when I can help so many organizations. And then also I will say too, and I've talked to a lot of um, like general, there um, is to a certain point, there, it's like a hard glass ceiling, <laughs> you oh. know? Um, there's, there's that, there's, there is a hard glass ceiling. And so you have to kind of realize, you have to kind of figure out, do I want to be within the system that is, you know, kind of keeping me at, in a certain area, or do I want to branch out and, you know, kind of make an impact on my own? Right. Um, so you're kind of able to do that. You're kind of able to be very congruent with your own values and what needs to be done. Just you know, being on your own. Yeah, I love that. And it's very mm -hmm. brave. Um, you know, I think it can be hard when you have a history of, of sort of like more stability or whatever of working in um, for someone else. It's, it's can feel mm -hmm. a little bit scary to go out on your own. But um, I think that the world needs what you're doing. So I'm happy that you decided. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what yeah. are who are some of the clients that you're that you're first working with, and and how have you been making impact with them? Like, what? Well, or I guess maybe we could ask more. Like, yeah, what is some of the advice that you give uh, to people who first come to you looking for your services? Yeah, so it's usually what happens with, especially with nonprofits, is that there's someone that's passionate about a cause. You know, the founder, the executive director. And they're so passionate, but they've kind of reached a point where they are at a standstill. They don't know what's next. They don't know necessarily, like, how do I connect more with my community? And yeah. how do I, um, how do I get more donors? Or, you know, what, 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 how do I do this? Because I think you get to a certain point in your organization where you're like, oh, I need to meet this next goal. Or it's easy oh. to keep doing the same thing and maybe you don't have the resources to do more sometimes or it's like it's like it's funny it's like nonprofit sometimes you get in a bubble and you only think of you know the nonprofit world that you're in I think every organization does this um, and you kind of have it's it's very powerful to have a view that's like looking at the whole picture because what I noticed is that there's a lot of there's a lot of people that support nonprofits and want to get involved on the outside. They just don't know how to do it. Um, and then there's a lot of nonprofits that need that help, but they don't necessarily know how to connect. Yeah. And so that, and I mean, especially uh, marketing and nonprofits. So it's hard because you don't necessarily have the resources or the staff that has training mm -hmm. to do marketing. And so there are basic concepts that you should think about um, when doing marketing that you just wouldn't know unless you have like years of experience. Um, but usually what I do when I first talk with a client is I might ask them, you know, tell me about your organization. 
tell me about what you do. And they might say, well, I help kids. And I'm like, well, that's great. But um, they're, they're very stuck on like what they do, how they do it. They, they, it's in their head. Everything's in your head, right? Um, but it's like, why do you do this? What are you hoping to do with this? Like, yes, you, you help kids, you teach kids. Um, but what are you, what are you helping them with? Like, are you mentoring the kids? Are you putting them in different places where they can see people that look like them to do certain things? This, this is, hold on, <laughs> sorry. Hold on. Yeah. I know. Um, how is the, how is the, the action of what you're doing in like the vision of the world you want to create? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because because that is what people latch on to. They don't like there's so many organizations that like help kids or do these different things. Like what what are you trying to accomplish within that? You know, you're you're basically, you know, kind of changing the world and changing the future. You're allowing these kids to um to be able to express themselves in a way that they normally wouldn't be able to express themselves. And really, you know, standing up for themselves and finding a voice through art, you know, so so that in turn helps them with their grades, you know, and things like that. And that's going to, you know, you know, there's, there's so much more that you're doing and just being able to communicate that. So a lot of times I will talk to a founder or a CEO, executive director, and I'll I'll get that out of them. And then that's where we start to go with the messaging. Right. And I will say, too, um, a lot of times people are like, oh, I need marketing, you know, because that's everyone is like, I need marketing because that's what they see on the outside. Marketing is really about strategy, too. So when I talk to so this might be something a little bit more unique to me. And that's why I say like whole person or vision based, um, because a lot of times people say that they need marketing, but they also need um leadership training or they also need to structure their organization in a different way or they also need to put systems in place an organization in place that it's it's easy to reach your customers and do different things but there's there's best practices that happen and yeah. i think like even like coming from corporate so two things coming from corporate like you know, there's systems in place all over the place because they know what they need to do um, but then also I have, um, I have training in leadership. So like a graduate training um, in leadership and human resources and things like that. Um, and actually practice being on like the executive level of organizations. Um, so that's something that sometimes people need coaching too, in a sense, you know, so that's, that's kind of why I say whole person, because it's not just about your organization. What else is going on in your life? Do you have kids? Do you have, you know, like they're, they're, it's it's a more complicated issue than running an ad, you know? So you're basically so. a therapist. <laughs> I can, I can uh. be, yes. Well, <laughs> we all need therapies, yeah. so, you know, don't, don't feel bad. I mean, I I see what you're saying, though, and I totally agree with you, because sometimes the fact that we're not doing marketing has to do with the the leadership and the person who is supposed to be in the leadership position, either not identifying that as a problem or not knowing how to take that next step. And that right there is the problem, um, the fact that you're mm -hmm. not sort of taking the reins and saying, OK, here's what we're going to do and here's the strategy behind um, how we're going to do it. Because, right. um, yeah, so I mean, I definitely feel like I have that problem sometimes just because with in growing with the organization, you just keep continually are learning the new roles that you have to take on, yeah. um, which is awesome. I love that. And I'm sure you have encountered that with the entrepreneurs that you work with. It's great to always be growing, but sometimes you need a little help. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because I mean, there's, you think about it, like there's a ton of people that have done it before. So why would you, you know, why would you go through the pain of having to figure it out when you don't have all the information, you know? So. So what would you say to, I guess, if we have any people that are watching right now, because I see some of my followers and probably yours, you know, some artists and some entrepreneurs, um, 
I guess, what would you, what would be something you would tell them if they're trying to say, like, to develop a new marketing strategy? Um, do you have any words of wisdom for just the people at the very beginning? Um, yeah, at the very beginning, I think you have to figure out why you're doing it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we kind of touched on that first, but, but this, and you don't be afraid to like be within a niche because you are not going to please everybody. Not everyone's going to want your product or service, but that's fine. You know, um, figure out what you stand for, why you're doing it. And then people that, and if you're consistent with that message, people that want to be a part of that are going to be attracted to you. Yes. Yep. That's, that's an important thing to remember that the people will find you if you're like honest and authentic with your message. Exactly. And it's, it's really about, I mean, you, that's a great word, you know, authenticity, because you don't have to be perfect too. I think a lot of people think that I have to, you know, do this thing. I have to be perfect at it. You don't have to, you can say, you know, I'm learning along the way and this is who I am. I'm bringing my whole self to the table this is what I stand for. This is what I believe. And people are going to appreciate that because I think, you know, marketing is really about relationships and those mm -hmm. relationships that you have with people and that community. Um, and so, you know, I think that's, those are really important key things to think about. I love that. It is about relationships and that's, so mm -hmm. how would you, um, how would you talk about the difference between outreach to constituents as a nonprofit and then outreach to donors are those should those messages be different or should they be the same uh they should be different okay. i mean it, it's it's um you know you always tailor your message to the stakeholder to the different stakeholders but you have to you have to think about what that particular you have to look at it from their point of view what right. would they want what are you actually giving them because it's not marketing is not about a product it's not about a service it's about an emotion it's about a feeling that you're giving that person when they do that so if someone is donating you know what what do they feel when they donate what are you fulfilling for them in a sense it's almost self-actualization you know um and that's totally different than what your community would want and it's it's you know it's kind of funny because a lot of times people say oh I don't know what they want or I don't know how to communicate with them and the first thing I say is oh well you should ask them yeah <laughs> and if you're like oh okay <laughs> you know like like don't be afraid to to ask people what they want like they appreciate that um think about things from their perspective but then also reach out to them and say you know I would like your advice. Like, how do you, what do you think about this? And uh, I think a lot of times when we, people reach out for marketing, they always think, oh, this is what I want you to do for me. But in a sense, you're doing something for them. Like, what do they want? You know, it's not just the one way um, yeah. transaction. That's interesting because I realize when I receive surveys from companies that I've bought from, I do sometimes like putting, giving my input to those surveys because it doesn't <laughs> feel like they care about what I think. And mm -hmm. if you really do like the product or the company or whatever it is, um, I don't know, I guess it is kind of nice to feel like you have, you have input into what they're, you're like, oh, I like, I already like this. What if they created something I liked even better? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like surveys are a good way of asking for advice or is it maybe like more direct direct emails or phone conversations? I think surveys are a way, uh -huh. um, but I think it, it's, a phone call is very powerful. Like surveys people are sometimes can do, it depends on how connected they are with you, yeah. but you know, they may or may not answer. If it's a company that you really like, oh, okay, I'll answer it. But anyone else, I'm not taking my time to answer that. But if you actually call me, and talk to me and you will hear the most amazing stories from people if you call them and talk to them whether they're your donor or they're part of a member of your community or a parent or something like that like you you will have like so much insight from that and yeah. i think that's so much more valuable um to do that yeah 
I think you're right. Do you think um, do you think people in general are afraid to pick up the phone and have a conversation? Is that something that you run into a lot with your clients? Uh yeah, it it I mean, it could be it could be intimidating for a lot of people, but you know, you just have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I you know, it's you have you have to do it whether you are you know, it's, and I mean, there's, there's preparations that you can do, right? So if you are in an or organization and you don't feel comfortable doing that, well, um, you can write out a script <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and you can, um, you can role play with your staff, you know, things like that, that you can do so that you feel a little bit more comfortable. And as you start to do it, it's easier and easier because you realize like some people don't want to talk to you. Okay, great. You know, and then other people are like, Oh, I'm so happy that you called me and they want to talk for hours. So, right. so it's, it's, it's less, I think in your head, you kind of build it up to be something that it's it, once you actually do it. And that's, that's the way to get through the fear, right? Is to mm -hmm. actually do it. Like the worst part is a part before you do it when you're like, this is horrible, I can't do this. Right. But the best part is like you do it and you're like, okay, that wasn't that bad. I can yeah. make five more calls, <laughs> you know? And it actually becomes, it becomes kind of fun. It's sort of like doing these conversations in the beginning when we came up with this idea, yeah. I was really nervous. And now I'm always looking forward to it because it's just, it's so, it's so interesting, it's fun, it's a very illuminating, yeah. thing, hopefully for the other person. So I imagine, that's how phone conversations could be as well, hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, I want to like switch gears a little bit and just talk more about your business and kind of, you know, get, get people some more information about like your history. Um, you know, I noticed in your mission that you have a specific um, part that you like to talk about sustainable fashion. So can we maybe talk about how you, why is that important to you and um, how do you factor that into your company and um, how, I guess maybe how, are, how can we make sustainable fashion more accessible for everybody? Yeah. So that's a big question, right? Which I think it's, it's such an interesting question, but um, to kind of back up, I've all, so, so I know a lot of people are like, well, I just got into this, but I've always been very into fashion. Like I've even worked, for years and years and years, 10 plus years in retail fashion. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and I've also like my mother, like sewed clothes, she was a seamstress, you know, so, um, and she, so she's always been into it. And so <laughs> just like watching runway shows and looking at Vogue magazine and all, I mean, just like I kind of grew up in it. So I, it's always been something that I've really been passionate about. And even the environment too, just like binging on nature documentaries when I was younger, like things like that. I've always been, but you know, what's funny is that I never knew that those two things like fit together. Right. And honestly, like sustainability and sustainable fashion has not really been a thing since like maybe um, for the last past few years, it's really gotten big. And I actually talk to sometimes um, people that have graduated high school or they're in this college program for sustainable fashion. I'm like, that was not a thing like when I was going to school, you know? So it's interesting. Um, but I will say that a lot of, and so I, I would say that that's just something that I'm passionate about. And so, and so that's kind of where it fits in because I really think that you have to find those things that you're really interested in and right. that you're really passionate about because that's going to push you through to even make a bigger impact in those areas because you're really interested in those areas. Um, but I've been on a number of panels and events and things like that for it. Um, and that is like the number one question or one of the questions that always gets asked is how can we make things more sustainable, sustainable for people, right? Um, or make it more accessible. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that you have to define sustainability because to me, sustainability is not about going out and buying a new outfit. You right. know, it's not about consumerism, right? I think that it's been, it's been, you know, brought to the center to say, you know, and honestly, like the question is like, middle uh, sustainability is such a middle-aged white woman thing, you know? And it's like, well, 
no, like sustainability is not about, that's what companies would have you believe because they want you to buy more things. Mm. Um, but sustainability is really about values, you know? So black and brown people like we, and I, I don't want to just say that, but like we have been sustainable in a, you know, for us, it was like, okay, going thrift shopping, hand-me-downs, making our own clothes. Like there's a lot of people that have been doing that, but it hasn't been defined as that, you know? Right. Um, so I think it's not necessarily about making it more accessible per se. I think it's about redefining it and right. saying that sustainability is not necessarily about what you buy, but it's all, it's about your values. It's yeah. about your value system. It's about connecting with the earth and it's about um, figuring out it personally, the things that you can do to live sustainable and to be educated and to do different things because, um, no, not everybody's going to be able to buy something, but they would be able to, I'm going to upcycle my clothes or I'm going to support a local designer. Like all those things are sustainable, <laughs> you know, or I'm not going to buy any new clothes that's sustainable and you do it in your own way. Like, they, they, I mean, it's just, it, to me, it's more about values than it is um, because you have to define sustainability too. Like sustainable, su sustainability is more about not thinking about, okay, what I do today and that's it. Sustainability is about what I do today that's going to affect, like knowing that it's going to affect what happens in the future. And yeah. if you think about that and you think that, oh, you know, um, if I, if I buy this, this is going to have a negative impact in the future for our planet even, right? Or it's going to have a negative impact on somebody that's across the globe, you know? Um, so, so thinking about it in that ways, and that is really what will keep you on that path for sustainability because you're more thinking about what you stand for and your values. Yeah. Um, I love that. And it's something that I've heard so much, so much throughout these conversations. Um, oh, wait, we just had a comment that said buying secondhand, but also it's about washing clothes that are made out of polyester and something microfibers. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's a whole thing. So, so we can even jump to that conversation and that's the, that's the inter intersectional part in a sense. Um, where you have to realize like everything is related, right? So, so, and I, like, there's so many things that people don't know about this unless you're into it. So like a lot of people, like a lot of people say, oh, I didn't know. I thought a factory or I thought a machine made my clothes. I didn't right. know that this indigenous person that's only getting paid le way less than a hundred dollars a month is making my clothes and they can't feed their family and they're because they're in they're in these deplorable working conditions because they're sewing this t-shirt that I bought for five dollars on sale you know so so like people don't know what's happening down the supply chain but then people also don't know hey when I wash my clothes I bought this polyester thing um and I wash my clothes and all these microplastics are going out into the ocean and killing the the um they're killing these fish yep. <laughs> that where an indigenous person can't there's no more fish for them to you know buy um to fish with to feed their families like everything is so interconnected <laughs> um so so yeah i mean she's she's absolutely right and for some i can't see the comments so if anyone's leaving a comment just read it out not using clothes that are made out of plastic, which is so true. Um, and there's, like you said, there's so many ways to be creative with it. So I, that's what I really like about sustainability is that, um, or you know, like you said, it's not about buying more products that are sustainable products. It's about like thinking about how you could reuse the clothes that you already have. Mm -hmm. come ways so that they if you want to be trendy and you know now the trend is to have a cropped shirt why don't you just cut some of the ones you already have instead of going and buying cropped shirts you know it's like I guess there's just um there's a lot of room for creativity and like you said um sort of doing your own thing with it and um that's something that I've been learning yeah. to 
conversations, again, like you said, that uh, black and brown people have been doing a lot of this stuff for a long time. Um, and it's interesting to me, and I'd love for you to speak on this if you could, um, wh how and why do you think black and brown people have been so excluded from the sort of mainstream environmental movement? And, you know, for a long time, I feel like that's changing now and it needs to, um, but like, why do you think that is? And um, how can we all kind of work to, to change that? And can marketing be a part of that potentially? Yeah, I think, I, th I think marketing is, is, um, is in, ingrained in everything that we do, you know, we're, I mean, this Instagram, you know, everything, I mean, this is a part of it, right? Um, so why aren't black and brown people in this conversation? Because you have to understand that we are operating in a system <laughs> that does not want to hear these voices, because if these voices were heard and included in the conversation, this stuff would not be happening. <laughs> these big companies would not be able to sell all these different clothes because people would, <laughs> we, wouldn't, we wouldn't stand for that. So you have to understand that things are operating in a system and that system needs to be broken down. Um, it needs to include um, black and brown voices um, in order to, for those things to change. Yeah. Um, and I, I did read an article um, the other day, because if you think about environmentalism and you think about the a lot of organizations, they are mostly white, you know, and the reason is because I if you if you think about and it's not that we don't care because we do, you know, I think statistics show that, you know, black and brown people eat, they care, but then they're also most affected by these issues. Right. Um, but do we have time to address these issues because of the system? Because if you're worried about putting food on your table and you're worried about your kids getting a good education, do I have time to attend an environmentalist, you know, meeting and, and be involved with that? If I have, if I'm like, hey, I'm going to this protest because, you know, someone just got shot <laughs> you know this is not like i'm i'm so busy fighting racism <laughs> and these systems that i i don't have i wish i could be involved with this i wish i could do more th with this but i don't and i i will also say that the companies that are in power a lot of this entire system like the narrative is controlled mm -hmm. you know so so a lot of times like even just like I love seeing black people outdoors and doing things outdoors because I'm like, you know, that's the, like, we need that connection. Every humans need that connection with nature. And it's not like we don't, it's not like black people don't hike. It's not like black people, you know, like there's all so many stereotypes that are perpetuated um, that it's like it, the, the whoever's advertising and things like that like they are the ones that control that narrative you yeah. know they are the ones that only put white people in their ads and don't show this as a normal thing that black people do um mm. i mean it, there's it gets so yeah. deep because even like do, do black kids have resources to go to the pool like do they have resources to travel to these right. these um beaches and things like that so it's it's just an interconnected <laughs> um systematic thing going down yeah <laughs> i was i was listening to this podcast called everybody's national parks and they interviewed mm -hmm. belton johnson who's like a black ranger at yosemite and he's been working there since the 80s um but he was speaking particular specifically to this issue that you were talking about of like why don't bipoc folks go to the national parks and I mean, it basically, he was boiling it down to um, like slavery, like a his history of slavery, racial mm -hmm. injustice, not feeling safe in um, public lands, um, yeah. feeling like those, you know, those were like, and not feeling a connection to the land because, you know, um, black people's ancestors have been taken from their own land. I mean, it just was, uh, it, it was really, a deep and long history that has created, um, you know, this issue that we're still experiencing today. Mm -hmm.
and it's um yeah, yeah it was just it's, yeah I even like I you know <laughs> I I even when I go to and I love being out in parks and nature but I will tell you that I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> like, it's not that I don't go. I still go, but the entire time I'm looking like, is somebody going to come out in the, <laughs> the bushes? Like, you never know. And there's there's just, you know, <laughs> it's like to to live in a constant state of fear, right? In a sense, like, it's, it's you know, we do yeah. have to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's one of the main reasons we want to have these conversations. It's like the little we can do to just normalize talking about this so that, I mean, that's, that's the one thing that we can do besides, you know, the protests and the, um, you know, defunding and all these different things, I think is just talking about it in an open way, so that mm -hmm. people that wouldn't normally be hearing this can start hearing it and start realizing the truth. <laughs> yeah. And you know, another thing that I love is, I mean, like I said, I love seeing people do it. Like you talked about the ranger and things like that. Like growing up, I don't know that I knew, you know, seeing the images on TV and things like that and people that I knew, like, I don't know that I knew of anyone that did those types of careers that were black, you right. know, like that, that's just not, you know, amplified that much. You always see someone else doing that. And it's so powerful to see someone that is a scientist and is doing those different things and say, Oh, okay, well I could do that too. Yeah. You know? So amplifying those voices of people that are doing that and just making that the norm. Yes. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, um, what else can we talk about in terms of your business? Because I want to, <laughs> I want to amplify your voice and I don't, but I also feel like there's so many questions I could ask you that are pertain to like our business. And I want mm -hmm. you to talk about, um, you know, what you, what you want people to know about around, um, around like what you're offering. So, um, I guess, I, well, actually, one question I do have is, did you just recently start this organization or your your agency, um, Greater Than Equal? Has it been? Um, so it's funny because I actually um, thought of that name like maybe 20 years ago. I don't know. Because, <laughs> I mean, I'm in marketing. Like, that's what I do. I make up names for things. Um, but um, But I've always done, like, marketing work on the side. And stuff like that so but uh, officially like at, with the focus that it has for social impact yes last year mm -hmm. okay so you yes. before COVID though and before everything that's been happening recently is so you started it and then COVID hit has that impacted has that how's that impacted your business um actually it's been great and then, well, okay, so I will say, so I'm in natural, right? And um, the tornadoes hit oh. here right before COVID, right? So every single nonprofit was focused on what can they do to help with the tornado. Focus is not on how can I grow my nonprofit and make an impact and things like that. Um, but the reason why I say it's actually been beneficial is because I can reach and connect with people that are not in the United States and that are international and that are doing different things. So a lot of the projects and some of the things that I work on is more internationally focused. It's not mm. just in the United States or in my state. You know, I work on a lot of things in, in Nashville, but there's, there's like, you know, everyone in the world is connected. And I think that kind of brought that home to people that, you know, we can do things together. It does not have to be so siloed in this little group or in the state. We can cross the world and do initiatives, which is which is great because I think that that's kind of what we're meant to do is to um, have that message across borders, you know, and kind of work together. I mean, we have to do that, right? We're all living on the same planet. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And that is the good that is the good part about social media is is that we can connect so easily with people from mm -hmm. different parts of the world and the country. Um, that's awesome. Well, I'm really glad to hear that that COVID has actually been in some ways a positive. And I think 
even though so many of us are experiencing, um, you know, lower income and, and quarantining is very hard, I think there is something to be said for this moment in that it shakes things up. Like whenever you have a really big change, mm -hmm. um, you to try new things and to think and just get out of your rut. And um, I've been grateful for that. Like it's, it allowed us to do this program, which allowed us to connect with you and the other intersections participants. Yeah. Um, sometimes you just don't know um, what the change is going to bring. And sometimes it can be really, really great. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, is there, a, is there a final, um, tidbit you want to share about your business or maybe a piece of advice to someone watching about marketing or where, where people can find you or reach out to you if they want your services, anything along those lines? Yeah, sure. So my website is greater than equal.com. The IG is greater underscore than underscore equal. Um, of course, my I, personal IG is up there, Kiva No More. Um, and that, that's pretty much where you can reach me. I mean, DM me if you want to chat more. I love talking to people. <laughs> um, so, so I would be happy to um, chat with anyone. Um, you know, yeah, that, that's where you can find me. Okay. Um, words of inspiration. I would say... <laughs> that your voice is needed right now the time is now so even if you because a lot of people they don't think that they can make an impact or they're not doing as much as other people but you're doing something and you have a sphere of influence whether you're posting something on your instagram or you're talking to your family about things that matter to you um, you do have an influence so don't underestimate the power of that um, don't be afraid to stand by your values and understand that you don't have to be perfect to do mm -hmm. that because <laughs> none of us are. None of us are. Uh -huh. um, so so that's what I would say. Um, I am working on a number of different projects. We didn't really get to talk that much about like arts and culture and things like that. Um, uh, you don't have to be done. And actually, I realized that's yeah, that was a hole in my questioning. So let's let's talk about that because I love that you said art connects culture and community um, in your, you know, that's that's heavy on your website. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we, I mean, you, <laughs> I'm preaching to the choir, you know, like, like, you know this, right? Um, so, so my, you know, when I was really getting into, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I love art, right? So, so you know, I was an art major. Like, I understand, you know, I'm heavily involved in, in art. And I just think that art has a power like nothing else to be a voice, um, whether it's, you know, somewhat of an activist voice or, you know, anything of that individual person and communicating that person's culture and what's important to them and it has a way of kind of crossing over different audiences and different cultures and kind of exposing them in a way to what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's a way to connect. And even if you think about music as art, you know, like hip hop, you know, that's, that's now like across cultures. And, and so I think that it has a very powerful way to connect people and to help people to understand. And even if you think of art and marketing terms and all these great Instagram posts that people are, you know, artistically putting together to communicate a message or a video or even, uh, you know, a video about an indigenous or a black and brown community or a photo like the power of a photo, you know, yeah. with, with these different things. It's like, well, I can't be there. But when I look at this picture, it just moves me, you know? Um, so it's, it's so powerful. It's like a way that we can connect. And I even, in, in a way, like, it, you know, you think about fashion. Fashion is art that you wear, you know? It's an expression of yourself without even saying anything, you know? So, and it's, everybody wears clothes, right? <laughs> and even and even if you don't care about the clothes that you wear, you do notice that the different difference in materials, like this itches me or this 
fell apart as soon as I <laughs> wore it, um, but this didn't. So, I mean, it, it's, you know, it touches, it's something that touches everyone and it, there's, there's an emotional aspect to yeah. art, to fashion, and it just, it has a power like nothing else to influence what we do, you know? Yeah. So, so it's, you know, I could, I could go way deeper on, on the fashion industry and how it just like kind of touches everything like poverty in the world and consumerism and, you know, all these different, all these different things, but it, it's really, it's something that can have a big impact on the world. Yeah. I mean, and you're right. I, I'm right there with you because that's sort of the premise upon which Ruckus Roots was founded was sort of this idea that to me, art was and is um, one of the most important things. It's just the thing that inspires me the most. And I just thought like, let's use that to connect people to mm -hmm. the environmental movement um, because it is something that creates that emotional connection. And it, it like, it stimulates our emotions. It makes us feel something. It makes us feel connected. It's a way of us expressing, like you said, our culture. And that's how people mm -hmm. care about things. So, you know, we were thinking if we could get people to care more. And how can we get people to care more? Well, let's use... Empathy. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's been such a uh, such a journey um, working with that. But I still I still believe it. And... Um, I mean, my, my sister's an anthropologist and she, I think, said once that the thing that makes humans stand apart, the thing that, that identifies us as human is our ability to create art. It's like language and art. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that sort of stood out when people, you know, started coming to be as, as we are now as like homo sapiens. So um, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm with you. I, I like, <laughs> I could talk about it forever. <laughs> Yeah, I think like we need to be able to tap into that area. Like it's so important. We need to be able to tap into that area of our brain mm -hmm. to really get creative and to connect and to solve the problems of our world. <laughs> you know, so so I think I mean it's horrible, but that is something that people are missing in a way. Like, you know, you hear about all these art programs getting discontinued. Um, and you know, like there's no funding and it's, it's just, it's so important. And even, even the fact that it's, it's been a thing where we're not told or we don't understand that everybody is creative. You know, we have some kind of, you know, creative thing. And I love seeing people being able to tap into that creativity and that part that is just that, that raw expression of yeah. emotions in a way. Absolutely. I know. It's my favorite. It's my favorite part of some of our programs when the student that says I'm not an artist or I'm not creative, um, you know, at the end of the program is so proud of whatever they made. That's truly one of my very favorite parts of of running our yeah. org. Um, that leads I wanted to know, do you feel like marketing is a creative outlet for you or it must be fashion? What is your what is <laughs> that you like to focus on creatively? Um, I, you know, maybe it is, I feel like my entire life is, <laughs> is creative. I mean, because I, you know, I talk to a lot of artists and I do like little things on the side. Um, but I, I guess I, it would be fashion in a sense because I do like, you know, kind of mixing things up in that way. I mean, my hair is, is I can get creative with my hair. Like there's, you know, there's so many, you know, opportunities. <laughs> like, you know, I like, that's just something that I, you know, I think I embody is that creativity. But then I will also say for me too, um, communication and even like messaging and figuring out creative ways for people to connect. Um, I think that that is something, something too that I love to do is to take a big problem or something very complex, like, you know, some type of scientific paper or issue and putting that into words that can communicate to a different stakeholder. Mm. Um, so in, in a sense, you have to use creativity for that. Like, how do you, how do you solve that? Yes, that is so, mm -hmm. and that's something I've, I've seen a lot of people have 
trouble with is like distilling what they want to do into a pithy sort of mission statement or whatever it is that just makes it kind of uh, like turns it on for people or they're like, Ooh, I want that. Um, and that is definitely a very creative uh, practice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love that. And I'm so grateful to be able to speak with you today. And I'm definitely going to be reaching out to use some of your services <laughs> for ruckus because I feel like we're ready and we're, we're, we're at that point. And um, speaking with you has definitely made me realize it's something we should do. I guess it's something I've always been a little bit afraid to do, or maybe like, ah, eh, do we really need that? We're going along fine, but it's time to be better than fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it, uh, it definitely is. It definitely is. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. So everybody, um, be sure to go check out greaterthanequal.com and the Instagram and Camila's Instagram. We're going to link everything um, in the IG so you'll be able to see it. Um, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I'm really yeah. grateful. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, have a, have a lovely rest of your day. We'll chat soon. You too. Okay, bye. bye.